Green Machine of Dartmouth has come a long way since its humble yet historic beginnings back in 1881. Dartmouth has accounted for 13 Ivy League championships unmatched by any other member of the Ivies. 1988 marked the 108th anniversary of Big Green football, and sentiment is high that the college on the hill is again headed in the right direction. Second year head coach Buddy Tevens, class of 79, coined his inaugural season of 2-8 and eight, an inauspicious beginning. But his 88 squad, although younger, was stronger, faster, and bigger than their predecessors due to an intense off-season conditioning where measurable results were transferred into gridiron gains. The philosophy apparent, strategy cannot succeed without strength. Another characteristic inherent in the 88 team, which was less measurable and all but invisible to preseason pollsters, was attitude. Early opinion polls slated Dartmouth to be at or near the bottom of the ancient eight at season's end. The Greens' aggressive and winning attitude turned out to be the faux pas of those non-believers. The 1988 season commenced at Memorial Stadium versus the University of Pennsylvania. 8,000 fans had turned out on a clear, calm day, hoping for retribution of the drubbing given to the Green by the Quakers the year before. But there was a vast difference between the squads of 87 and 88. The Quakers learned fast. Offense generated some sparks of life. reared its ugly head. A strong special team effort kept pen in hand. Junior quarterback Mark Johnson juggled his offensive weaponry. Dartmouth threw first blood. A 79-yard, 12-play scoring drive was capped off with a frozen rope to junior tailback Nick Stanham for a five-yard touchdown reception in the corner end zone. The first half was highlighted with aggressive defensive play. Even on Penn's only first half touchdown, the Green did not submit, forcing the fumble, but unfortunately for Dartmouth, it bounced in a Quaker direction. The green offense kept Penn honest. But defense was the name of the game. Grudgingly, Dartmouth gave ground. And when the Quakers thought they had gotten their foot in the door, Sorensen slammed it shut. Penn settled for a field goal and a slim 10-7 halftime lead. The Green were leading the Quakers in virtually every category except the one that counted most, the scoring column. The second half opened as the first. Defense led the attack. Pennsylvania blocked the Dartmouth punt and garnered six unanswered points, but the Green were quick to retaliate. Junior fullback Dave Clark took the draw 38 yards for the score. A fumbled snap negated the PAT. Penn held the lead 19-13. The Quakers muster another score that again is countered when Johnson finds wide receiver Craig Morton splitting two defenders with a 55-yard scoring toss. Dartmouth closed the gap to within five. A suffocating defensive effort forced a Quaker punt.
but Penn capitalizes on a Johnson interception and improves their lead 33 to 20 over the home team. Sophomore running back Brendan Mahoney took the ensuing kickoff 42 yards into Penn territory. Johnson finds Morton downfield where the ball is spotted on the one. Johnson on the keeper. Romero on the PAT and the green are within six. Defense kept up the pressure, but the clock held no mercy. Dartmouth was unable to regain possession as time ran out. Pennsylvania would go on to share a piece of the Ivy title, but not before becoming the first of many to realize that Dartmouth was indeed back in the hunt. Dartmouth now winless after its first start. Welcome the visit of the brown and white of Lehigh University. The two teams have met only once before, way back in 1950 at Memorial Field. In this, their second visit, they proved to be inhospitable guests. Lehigh jumped out to a 14 to nothing first quarter lead and never looked back. But the contest was not without positive statements for Dartmouth. Offensively, Mark Johnson compiled 239 yards in the air and tied the school record on passing attempts with 48, an indication of the 88 team's evolving personality. Junior wide receiver Tom Parker carried the bulk of the receiving duties with seven grabs for 76 yards and a touchdown. Wide receiver Craig Morton had 70 yards on eight catches. Tight end Chris Keck pulled in another seven for 65 yards. Defensively, three Dartmouth players compiled double-digit statistics. Defensive back Scott Sims had 10 solo tackles for 14 stops. Linebacker Sorensen recorded 13 takedowns. Defensive back Neil Abramson contributed another 11. Senior inside linebacker Kevin Cooper made the only interception on the afternoon. Special teams of preseason worry proved to be not only competent, but a weapon in itself. Junior All-Ivy punter Rob Hibbard booted only three times on the day. One was for 62 yards, and his average was over 51. Running back Chris Pollard, Dartmouth's all-time leading kickoff returner, and Brendan Mahoney scampered 102 and 85 yards respectively on their returns, which was a reflection of the lethal one-two punch that would keep opponents on their toes throughout the season. Pollard's 69-yard kickoff return set up Tom Parker's fourth quarter touchdown pass. Running back Dave Clark scored Dartmouth's other touchdown on a 20-yard run, averaged 6.8 yards per carry on the day. The young Dartmouth squad did not relent. Sophomore nose tackle Pete Chapman broke through and blocked the Lehigh punt that resulted in a safety. Although bettered by a margin of 41 to 16 against a good Lehigh team, the green of Dartmouth displayed a lot of character in their adversity. This character would prove to be pivotal in their success throughout the rest of the schedule.
big green flew south to the warm climate of North Carolina to face the Davidson College Wildcats. The cats were similar to the green in as much as they were young, enthusiastic, and hungry for their first win of the season. First half action displayed many highlights on both sides of the ball. Those scoring highlights were not among them. She walks down the street and knocking on dead. Teams took to the halftime locker room sharing a 3-3 tie, hardly a shootout. But Dartman took to the field in the second half, bent on securing their first victory of the year. Defense kept the pressure on. Johnson and his offense just kept chipping away. Johnson connected with Morton on a 32-yard scoring strike that lifted the green into the driver's seat and onto their first win of the campaign. When the smoke had cleared, Dartmouth had an impressive 24-3 win over Davidson. Dartmouth again journeyed south to bordering Massachusetts to the home of the Holy Cross Crusaders at Fitton Field in Worcester. The game was played in a driving rain that made the field an absolute quagmire. Results from days on end of rain and snow that did not subside from the beginning of the contest till the end. Freezing temperatures did not add to the situation. The stage was set for a game that could have easily been decided by the kicking teams. You could imagine that thinking as Holy Cross deferred receiving the ball until the second half. The Crusaders scored first on a first quarter interception. Quarterback Johnson tried to keep the Dartmouth attack alive. The Crusaders recovered a green fumble only to have it pirated back by an alert Scott Sims. When nothing else worked, Johnson took it upon himself. When the green pulled back to regroup, Hunter Hibbard did an excellent job of keeping the Crusaders at bay. Holy Cross's drive stalled, and they were forced to punt. Dartmouth again went to the air when convention dictated not to. Johnson mixed it up with his receivers and set up Romero's field goal himself. Romero came through and the Crusaders' lead was cut to four. A green defensive stand kept the Crusaders in check. The score remained unchanged as both teams hit the locker room for the half. The Crusaders' decision to defer the kickoff almost backfired when defensive back Scott Sims snagged another misdirected aerial. With field conditions taking a turn for the worse, turnovers seemed inevitable. Holy Cross happened to be in the right place at the right time. Despite a stingy defensive effort, the Crusaders convert their ill-found wealth into seven quick points and a 14-3 lead. The remainder of the half displayed Dartmouth's unwillingness to accept defeat.
Crusaders enlarge their lead in the waning moments with a field goal. And the final score, Holy Cross 17, Dartmouth 3. One of the biggest weekends of the year for the College on the Hill is homecoming. The event becomes even more prominent when the opponent is dressed in crimson. Both Dartmouth and Harvard entered the contest sharing identical overall records with one noticeable exception. The green were 0-1 versus Ivy opponents and the crimson were 1-1. Dartmouth was anxious to post another win to improve their record to two and three, but even more important was the opportunity to beat Harvard and thus even up their Ivy schedule. The Green hadn't won since 83, and with last year's horror show in Cambridge, Dartmouth wasn't looking for a sequel. For an added highlight, ESPN was telecasting the game coast to coast as the Ivy League game of the week. Harvard received the opening kickoff, Although mustering a first and ten situation just inside Dartmouth territory, the D held steadfast with Michael making his presence obvious. Sophomore Pete Chapman made a shoestring tackle for a 17-yard loss. The Crimson tried to regain lost terrain, but Michael dashed their hopes. Forced into a fourth and 30 punting situation, sophomore defensive back John Owens made the block that seemed to keep Harvard reeling for the rest of the afternoon. The Greens' first possession was unproductive, but the defense took up where they left off with Michael again the enforcer. The Crimson's decision to go for broke proved to be their undoing. Scott Sims made the heist that gave the ball back to Dartmouth. From the shotgun formation, Johnson found Keck, who infiltrated across midfield. Johnson kept it in the airways, juggling receivers Anderson and Keck. It was Anderson who found Harvard's juggler in the corner end zone for the 7 to nothing lead. On Harvard's second play of their next series, Sims came up with the ball. Failing to capitalize offensively, defense continued its demolition derby. When they went inside, Kevin Linsman made the stop. When they opted for the outside, Michael headed them off at the pass. Michael was also there when they went to the air. Dartmouth took over in Harvard territory, and Johnson wasted little time getting airborne to his favorite receiver, Craig Morton, for a 43-yard bombshell as the green increased their margin to 14-0. Second quarter action showed a relentless defense. and a calculating offense. Johnson went down with an injury just before the half, and senior Chris Rourke took over the quarterbacking duties. From Dartmouth's own three-yard line, running back Dave Clark took a handoff for a routine bread-and-butter play that turned out to be anything but routine. He tries to cut it outside and does. David Clark with the captain Peterson.
position to beat. Clark at the 30. Clark at the 10-yard line. Touchdown! Following several key blocks, including two by wide receiver Craig Morton, Clark scampered 97 yards for a touchdown and a place in the record book. It was the longest run in Ivy League history, a record that had stood for 20 years. The Green took a 21 to nothing lead. Harbor, though, never to be taken lightly, ended the half with a score of their own to keep the game within reach at 21 to seven. Johnson returned to the lineup in the second half, but Dartmouth's initial possession was uneventful. Ivy punter Rob Hibbard blasted a 52-yarder that put the Crimson deep in their own domain. Although able to move the ball, defense was stingy. When the Crimson machinery stalled, Johnson took over and took to the Ozone and passed without favor. Junior place kicker Carl Romero booted a 37-yard field goal that increased Dartmouth's security blanket 24-7. Harvard took possession, and Michael again made his presence known, as did Chris Castoro. He hauled in an interception on the succeeding play. Johnson took advantage of the situation and connected with Anderson for 10. Running back Pollard picked up seven around the end. Clark kept the drive alive going over the top. Johnson rolled left and found Morton alone in the end zone for the 18-yard scoring strike. Dartmouth increased its lead 31-7. The Crimson again were in striking position when sophomore outside linebacker Jeff Blackburn deflected a pass that turned the ball back over to Dartmouth. It took Johnson just three plays to find airmail Morton in the clear, which quickly turned into an 84-yard sprinting contest that was clearly no contest at all. Morton's score established him as Dartmouth's all-time leading receiver and tied him with three other former Green players for most touchdowns in a single game with three. Dartmouth now had a commanding lead over Harvard, 38-7. Defense delivered the finishing blows. Craig Morton was named Ivy League Player of the Week for his receiving efforts. Seven catches for 190 yards for three touchdowns and a 27.1 yard average. The Green now sported a two and three record overall and had tied up their Ivy League record at one and one. Cornell University traveled to Hanover as Dartmouth's sixth opponent and third Ivy League adversary. 
The Big Red carried with them a 3-2 overall record, including 2-1 in the Ivies. First quarter action was scoreless, but not without highlights. It was a defensive ball game until late in the first half. Parnell was able to post a 10 to nothing lead going into the locker room. Dartmouth's defense was stubborn, but Cornell prevailed on the opening series and added a seven-point margin that increased their lead to Mark Johnson went to the air. Johnson found tight end Chris Keck over the middle for four yards and a touchdown. Regretfully, the only score Dartmouth would generate on the afternoon. In a losing effort, four defensive players went double digit. Leading the pack was inside linebacker Paul Sorensen with 17 total stops. Co-captain Paul Michael contributed another 13. Outside linebacker Jay Sweat had 11 takedowns, as did Chris Castoro. Defensive tackle Kevin Linsman had five solos and assisted on two more. Although outscored 24 to seven, the green displayed proficiency in many aspects of their offensive attack with a multitude of players taking part. Running back Dave Clark had over 100 yards rushing and receiving. Tight end Chris Keck hauled in 75 yards and nine grabs and the greens only touchdown. Junior tailback Nick Stanham accounted for another 64 yards receiving. Greg Morton was limited to 30 yards on four catches. Special teams, Rob Hibbard booted a respectable 33-yard plus average on the afternoon. Dartmouth's record dropped to two and four overall and one and two in the Ivies. Dartmouth journeyed south to New Haven, Connecticut, home of the Yale Bulldogs. They faced off in Ivy League action in the Yale Bowl on a sunny New England afternoon. Unfortunately, things didn't remain sunny very long for the Dartmouth Green. The Elis put nine unanswered points on the board before Dartmouth knew what hit them. Second quarter action saw the Green somewhat rejuvenated. Dartmouth got on the board with a Romero field goal. A strong defensive effort hampered the Eli progress. The Bulldogs had to settle for a field goal and a 12-3 lead. With a shovel and dirt And not even worry about Getting hurt Ain't that tough enough Ain't that tough enough Ain't that tough enough Ain't that tough enough 
Dartmouth drive proved to be fruitless as Romero's kick went astray. Defensive back Mike Campanelli came up with a late first half interception that enabled Johnson to negotiate a last ditch effort for a score. Romero was on the money, and the Yale lead was cut to six. Yale 12, Dartmouth 6. Statistically, the Green had run a balanced first half. The Green took their first possession of the second half at midfield, and Johnson went to work. Taking it upon himself, Johnson scrambled for a 31-yard touchdown. Romero's kick put the green on top for the first time in the afternoon. Dartmouth 13, Yale 12. Again, defense bore down. An interception put the ball back into Dartmouth's hands, but neither team mounted a scoring threat for the remainder of the quarter. Early on in the fourth quarter, the Bulldogs kicked a field goal to regain the lead 15-13. But it was a 57-yard touchdown romp by an Eli running back on Yale's next possession that proved to be the straw that broke the camel's back for Dartmouth. The Elis took a 22-13 lead that would not change. Dave Clark led all Dartmouth ground gainers with 45 yards rushing and additional 13 receiving. Wide receiver Craig Morton had 69 yards on five catches. Tailback Nick Stanham had five for 51 yards. Defensively, Paul Sorensen and Paul Michael both posted 14 tackles each. Defensive back Neil Abramson netted 11 tackles on the afternoon. Castoro and Campanelli each had aerial steals. Defensive tackle Kevin Linsman compiled nine tackles. Special teams again played their roles well. Rob Hibbard posted a 36.8 yard average on five punts. Place kicker Carl Romero went two for three, including a 33 yarder. Sophomore Brendan Mahoney ran up 67 yards on four kickoff returns, including a long gainer of 27. Dartmouth was vying to get back on the winning track as they faced the Lions of Columbia, a team the Green had lost to since 1971. The Lions had ended their five-year winless drought early on in the season with a victory over Princeton, but they were no team to be taken lying down. They were a young and hungry team, characteristics also inherent in the Dartmouth squad. The Green wasted no time in letting Columbia know of its intentions. Chris Pollard raised 23 yards with the opening kickoff for good field position on the green 40-yard line. Johnson kept the ball in the air. Anderson was on the receiving end and brought Dartmouth down to the one. Clark banged it home to light up the scoreboard first. Offensively and defensively, the green provided fine play but it wasn't until late in the first half that Dartmouth would strike Pater once more. Romero boomed a 21-yard field goal to take a 10-0 first-half lead going into the lockers. The Lions rallied in their first series to come to within three. The Greens' next possession was negated, and Columbia's forward progress was neutralized by a suffocating defense. Forced to punt, the ball landed in the hands of Mahoney, a lethal open-field threat. 
And true to his reputation, Mahoney took off for 67 yards and the score effectively breaking Columbia's spirits 20 to 10. Defense dug in to preserve the lead. Offensively, Morton returned to form, pulling in 10 catches for 98 yards, tying the school record for most catches in a single game. Dave Clark gained 129 all-purpose yards, including one touchdown. Defensively, Paul Sorensen led all green defenders with 14 arrests, including one sack. Chris Castoro had 13 tackles. Mike Campanelli and Jay Sweat each recorded one interception. The sack pack included Dave Termolin, Dave Murphy, and Jay Sweat. Special teams remained clutch performers. Hunter Rob Hibbard kept the Lions at bay with a 44-yard average on the day. Place kicker Carl Romero went two for three in field goal attempts. In addition to his 67-yard punt return for a touchdown, Mahoney also returned a kickoff for 30. Mahoney received Ivy League Player of the Week accolades for his efforts, which included 124 all-purpose yards. Dartmouth bettered its overall record to three and five, and Ivy record to two and three, as the Green prepared to face Brown. Dartmouth Green remain road warriors, this time traveling to Providence, Rhode Island, the home of the Brown Bruins, so far winless in their 88 campaign. Parity as it exists in the Ivies creates far more pressure for the favorite than it does for the underdog. Dartmouth, though, was ready both physically and emotionally for the test. Mahoney received the kickoff, a role that he has come to master, and returned it 58 yards to the Brown 22. Clark took it up the gut. And it was Clark again through the airwaves. Johnson took it in himself for the score. Romero's kick was good, and Dartmouth held the lead 7-0. The green defense smothered the Brown attack. Consequently, they choked up the ball as Campanelli was an enthusiastic recipient. Dartmouth again returned to the offensive, but it took just one play to make a costly turnover and just one play for the Bears to tie it up at 7. Pollard took the ensuing kickoff 26 yards for good field position. The Green diversified their attack and mounted a drive to set up a Romero field goal. The Bruins took over, but their possession was short-lived Paul Sorensen stifled the Bears' progress, which forced them to the air. And it was Campanelli again to make the best of the situation. Dartmouth assembled another drive. And Romero came through. The Green regained the lead 10-7. Outside linebackers Matt Walco and Jay Sweat came up with the big plays. Again, Brown's hand is forced. Mahoney takes the call and answers back promptly with a 33-yard punt return deep into Bruin territory. Johnson pairs with Clark to put the ball inside the 10. Mahoney takes the pitch down to the one. Clark breaks the plane. Romero adds icing and Dartmouth leads 17 to seven. A hard hitting defense cannot prevent the Bruins from closing the gap to within three.
The Green go on the march again. With Romero's expertise, the spread becomes six. Brown threatens to strike when Jay Sweat throws them for a loss. Brown takes the opening kickoff and third quarter action, but their series is cut short through the actions of sophomore defensive tackle Dave Murphy and nose tackle Pete Chapman. Paul Michael comes up with a loose ball. Dartmouth takes advantage of the opportunity to drive 29 yards inside Bruin territory. Romero comes through again and splits the uprights. Dartmouth 23, Brown 17. Possession changes several times, but defense plays in top form. Fourth quarter, Dartmouth's offensive wheels begin to turn once more. Johnson to Keck. Mahoney took it off tackle. Wide receiver Dave Anderson brings the ball to midfield. Clark breaks into enemy territory. Keck again is called upon. Clark takes it over left tackle from the 12 for six. Dartmouth takes the lead 30 to 17. With time running down, Brown again gets in a position to strike. Defensive back Chris Castoro gets the pick and shares his newfound wealth with teammate Scott Sims. It took Johnson just four plays to nail Clark for pay dirt. Dartmouth 37, Brown 17. The Dartmouth defense playing clean up as the clock wound down. With just minutes to go in the game, Brown managed to score, but the points were moot. Dartmouth 37, Brown 24. Ironically, Brown's game plan to stop Morton, which prevented him from getting a single catch for the first time in his Ivy career, opened the game up, which saw numerous other contributors. For the second straight week, sophomore Brendan Mahoney received Ivy League Player of the Week honors. Mahoney ran for 108 on the ground, pulled 15 out of the air, returned three punts for 57 yards, and two kickoffs for 78, amassing 258 total all-purpose yards. With only one opponent, Princeton, left of the season, Dartmouth had only one chance left to produce the best record that the Green had seen in six years on the hill. Dartmouth headed south to Palmer Stadium in Princeton, New Jersey to meet the orange and black. There was face saving riding on the outcome. A win would give the green an overall record of five and five with a winning four and three Ivy League record and also a share of third place with Princeton. The Tigers were a strong team with the Garrett brothers pivotal to their success and they weren't about to make it easy for their Ivy counterparts. Princeton jumped off to an early lead, but not without paying the price from a tough green defense. Early in the second quarter, Johnson got his troops moving in the right direction.
The drive culminated in an unsuccessful fake field goal, but it didn't dampen Dartmouth's spirit. The defense shut down the Tigers' offense. Johnson alternated his personnel into Princeton territory. on the Tigers' six-yard line where Coach Stevens again opted for the kick. This time there was no fake and Dartmouth was on the board. The second half started out uneventful until the Tigers' second series. Green jerseys were everywhere. Again, Princeton was forced to give up possession, but a great Tiger boot settled on the Dartmouth three-yard line. Then, from a chapter already written not long ago, fullback Dave Clark took the handoff up the middle in a playbook perfect rendition of a run he had made versus Harvard. He raced down the left sideline to tie his own Ivy League record of 97 yards for a touchdown. The game was tied at 10-all. Dartmouth suffocated the Tigers on the next series, sweetened by a Chris Castoro sack on fourth down, which put possession back in green hands. On the second play of the series, Johnson clicked with Morton on a bomb and six points. Dartmouth held the ace 17 to 10. Not to be outdone on their home field, the Tigers fought back, but not without facing a solid frontal assault. Princeton sustained a drive that netted a 17 all tie. Mahoney took the kickoff and returned it to the Dartmouth 43. Tight end Chris Keck got to rock into Princeton territory. On three plays, Mahoney brought the green down to the Tigers' four-yard line. Doing what he does best, Clark took it over the top for the score and the lead, 24 to 17, and the game. Offensively, Dave Clark was a big gun with over 127 yards, including two touchdowns. Dartmouth amassed over 400 total offensive yards, which amounted to a 6.9 yard gain per play. Romero converted all of his PATs, which gave him a perfect season of 24 for 24. Quarterback Mark Johnson went 18 for 25 for 273 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions. Johnson captured Ivy League Player of the Week honors as he moved up into second place on Dartmouth's all-time season passing list with 2,262 yards. Mark finished his junior campaign as a leading passer in the Ivy League, averaging 247.6 yards per game.
Dartmouth possessed a talented nucleus of seniors who provided strong leadership and record-breaking performances. Offensive co-captain and honorable mention All-Ivy Center, Dave Gazanigo was a cornerstone who spearheaded the Greens' running attack and fortified the passing game. Defensive co-captain and All-Ivy inside linebacker Paul Michael was a menacing defensive presence anytime he was around the ball, and that was often. Craig Morton, the perennial All-Ivy wide receiver who set school career records for receiving yardage, total receptions, receiving touchdowns, and single season receiving yardage. He has the longest touchdown reception in Dartmouth history, a 98-yarder during his sophomore year. His numerous records and accolades will surely stand the test of time for many years to come. Second team All-Ivy linebacker Paul Sorensen was the team leading tackler and a member of the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame as a scholar athlete. Wide receiver Dave the Noodle Anderson played a big part in the Dartmouth aerial attack. His 23 grabs in the year were good for a 9.6 yard average. Scott Sims, a second team All-Ivy defensive back, raked in six interceptions on the season, tying his own school record, which placed him 10th in the nation overall for Division I AA. Tight end Chris Keck, honorable mention All-Ivy, was second in receiving for the Big Green Air Corps. His sure hands and devastating blocking ability made him one of Dartmouth's most volatile and dependable performers. Defensive back Mike Campanelli, another green aerial opportunist, had five interceptions, including one for a touchdown versus Davidson College. His five steals placed him 12th in the nation. Offensive tackle Rich Outson saw limited action due to an early season injury, but Rich's enthusiasm and work ethic during rehabilitation enabled him to rebound for the season finale. Neil Abramson, a member of the defensive secondary who received the Lester R. Godwin Award, which cites perseverance over personal disadvantage, rose through the depth chart to finish third in team tackle. Inside linebacker Kevin Cooper provided solid play on defense and on special teams. Running back Dan Rivers was a mainstay special teams performer. Secondary specialist Rick Bartlett played with selfless enthusiasm. Kickoff return specialist Chris Pollard overcame a nagging early season injury to post a 25.3 yard return average. Good enough to place him ninth in the nation, Division I AA. Chris holds school records for number of returns for games, season, and career, and also return yards for games, season, and career. Backup quarterback Chris Rourke is a solid offensive leader with a number of Dartmouth passing and total offensive records in his own right. Jim Katzman, a dedicated team player and backup place kicker. Pat Piccarello, backup quarterback and sure-handed holder for extra points and field goals that contributed to kicker Romero's record-breaking season. Jay Sweat was a two-year starter at outside linebacker for the Dartmouth Green. Jay raised havoc in the offensive backfield. Outside linebacker Matt Walco is a dedicated athlete who made his impact felt. Coach Teven's 1988 staff was a composite of young, enthusiastic, and dedicated coaches, which was the perfect complement for the 1988 squad. Newcomer Gary Emanuel, the defensive line coach, is no newcomer to the college coaching ranks. Emanuel is a 1982 graduate of Plymouth State, where he also initiated his coaching career. He's made stops at Westchester University, and most recently, the University of Massachusetts, before arriving at the college on the hill. Glenn Pyres is the vested veteran of the Green staff after completing his fourth year at Dartmouth. Pyres is a 1980 graduate of Springfield College and received his master's from Syracuse, his launching point of college coaching. Glenn handles the inside linebackers. Second year offensive coordinator Brud Bicknell is a 1981 graduate of Ohio Wesleyan. He made his college coaching debut at Wake Forest where he was a tight end coach. He joined Teven's staff at Maine and subsequently moved on to Dartmouth with Coach Teven's appointment. Bicknell coaches the running back. First year Dartmouth outside linebacker coach Fred Chatham is a 1974 graduate of the University of North Carolina. Chatham returned to UNC as an assistant in 1981, a position he held until his move to Dartmouth this past season. Offensive line coach Steve Robichaud received his bachelor's degree from Springfield College and his master's from the University of Maine. 
as a coach, Robichaud has made stops at Worcester Polytechnic Institute and Maine before joining Tevens Dartmouth staff. Defensive coordinator and secondary coach John Lyons is a 1974 graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. He began his coaching career at his alma mater and went on to become the defensive coordinator at Boston University before assuming that same capacity at Dartmouth. Second year head coach Buddy Tevens is a 1979 graduate of Dartmouth College. At Dartmouth, Coach Tevens was a highly acclaimed quarterback and co-captain of the 1978 Big Green Squad, which captured the Ivy League Championship. His coaching career began at DePaul University. Tevens left DePaul to become an assistant at Boston University, and within two years, he was the offensive coordinator, a position he held for three seasons. In 1985, Coach Tevens was made head coach at the University of Maine, where he put together back-to-back -back winning seasons, a feat the Bears hadn't accomplished in 21 years. In December of 1986, Buddy Tevens was named the 19th head football coach of Dartmouth College. Dartmouth's 1988 record-breaking season included four Ivy League victories, the best for the Greens since 1983. Overall slate of five and five, the best since 1982. All Ivy quarterback Mark Johnson from Worcester, Massachusetts, and all Ivy defensive tackle Kevin Linsman out of Delhi, Iowa, are the offensive and defensive co-captains for 1989. If the inauspicious beginning of 87 was a tough pill to swallow, the relative prosperity of 88 was just the tonic needed to assure the followers of the green the college on the hill will continue its climb to the top of the ancient eight.